Hey everybody, how's it going? Like Butter here, and today I got another division video for you. And we are going to be talking about the blind set, which is brand new to 1.3 or underground. <clears throat> and I wanted to talk about what I think of this set and if I think it's going to be viable in which situations. Um, so what I am running is I am running four blind. I am running a reckless chess piece, which is a 204. But if you can get a 229, even better. Um, with I think it has like pulse duration and exotic damage resilience and armor. So it's a pretty good chess piece. And then I'm also using savage gloves, which I think savage gloves are possibly the most important um, part of gear in this update because of the changes to how much harder it is to get crit chance. Since I was getting a lot of 268 pieces that have high base armor rolls, um, I was able to not need any of the armor mods that I usually need to kind of max my armor out. I'm only two armor over the max, so it's pretty nice. Um, and what I did is I put a lot of crit chance mods on. Now, I, I think a lot of people out there kind of underestimate how good crit chance mods are. Um, a lot of people think that 1.5% crit chance isn't a huge deal, but you'd be surprised if you can put three to four crit chance mods on and get that extra six and a half percent, it'll be huge and it will be a super help and that's what I have on here to help me with the crit chance. I think my base crit chance is like 17.5% or close to 20% and then I'm getting another 14% uh, from my savage gloves. So not bad, you know, after I pulse I'm around like, I don't know, like 50-ish to 60-ish percent. So not bad, you know, when I pulse I'm almost maxed out. And uh, I have skill power on my backpack and my mask. I've become more and more of a fan of this because I only have 1,100 electronics. The only thing that I have that has electronics on is is my holster. That's it. Nothing else has electronics. Um, so I'm, you know, I'm becoming a really big fan of the skill power and the uh, or the skill power on the backpack and the mask because with 268s. You can get up near 7,000 skill power on your backpack and close to five, maybe even five and a half uh, thousand skill power on your mask. So you end up like adding an extra 14, even 15k skill power to your build. And you know, you throw in like one skill power mod, which are really good. Um, I have one that has like 15, uh, 1500 skill power, and you end up having a pretty decent build. And I think I have about 25,000 skill power on this build, uh, 377k toughness with 92k health, 75% armor mitigation. Um, I think I have like 15 to 20% exotic damage resilience, which would be nice to have it a little bit higher, but for uh, you know, the time being, I think it's okay. You you can also run exotic damage resilience um, mods if you want. 3%. I think you can even get 4%. I'm not sure on uh, one of the higher ones. And that will help you out a lot in, you know, the new incursion, the Dragon's Nest incursion, and all that other stuff. Um, but right now, I think this is a really solid build. So I want to talk about whether I think you will enjoy the blind build and I'll tell you why I'm uh you know why I built it because I've kind of like to test things out and try new builds even if they seem like they wouldn't be helpful uh, a lot of people like the fact that I you know take the time to test things out that may not even seem useful and sometimes they do turn out to be pretty useful so um if you're unfamiliar with the blind set basically the two set is 20% pulse critical hit damage, which was hugely nerfed uh, from what they first showed. At first, they showed 100% pulse critical hit damage, but I'm assuming they thought that was a little bit too high. I don't think 20% uh, pulse critical hit damage is like super good. I think it's okay. Uh, I think it would have been a little bit better if it was like 50% and make it a little more viable, but maybe they thought it was just a little bit too strong in PvE scenarios. Um, so the pulse critical hit damage, obviously I run pulse, which is good. Um, I also run the damage pulse as well, which so like when I pulse, I end up getting around like 30% crit chance. Uh, or I think it's a little bit lower than that 27% crit chance and like 80 to 90% uh, Pulse critical hit damage. So we're almost maxed out on that pulse critical hit damage So when I'm pulsing uh, me and my team are doing a lot of damage also with my higher skill power It's you know reducing the uh, the cooldowns 
uh, duration as well. So if you get like, pul I have some pulse duration on too. So, you know, the pulse is, is pretty good uh, with this build. So the three piece is 100% blind and deaf resistance, which helps you out more than you would think. Now, the reason that you get 100% blind and deaf resistance is because the four piece, when you kill a target, basically it drops a flashbang right at their feet. Um, it's, it, it's pretty instant though. It's not like it hits the ground and beeps a bunch and then, you know, blows up. It, it, it kind of just drops from the person that you kill and then like in about a second it just kind of pops and you can blind everyone in an area. And this is super, super helpful. And the 100% blind and deaf resistance is really, really nice. Like if somebody hits you with one of the, um, one of the flashbang sticky bombs, you just don't get phased by it whatsoever. So you don't like it's really not an issue at all it's kind of nice but also i've noticed that the four piece blind is really helpful in pve situations um especially in the underground a lot of times in the underground um when npcs spawn they usually spawn in like a doorway or a sh really small passageway where they're kind of all stacked up and you can shoot one of them and it will drop a flash at their at their feet and not only will it flash them and blind them but a lot of the time, it'll actually set them on fire as well. There's a percentage uh, of, of chance that the flashbang that drops at their feet, you know, catches them on fire. And, you, you know, it may happen to you if you have really low burn resistance, um, you know, when you get hit by a flashbang by an NPC, sometimes you'll get caught on fire. Um, but yeah, it's like super good to not have to worry about ever getting blinded and, uh, you know, to have that AOE effect help your team i think in pve it is super super helpful um i'm also using the g36 and the m1a and i think you guys are gonna like the drop i get at the end of this video as you can see i put god roll in the title uh but i promise the <laughs> i couldn't believe it it was a it's a pp19 drop but i won't i won't uh you know i won't uh go anymore any further on that i don't want to ruin it but yeah so i'm using the g36 for this build that's going to be a placeholder until the blind rifle comes out now a lot of people are are going to be like well drew why do you run blind like i don't think it's very good there is a blind battle rifle that's going to be coming out it's not out yet um but it's going to be coming out soon i wonder if it's going to be coming out in uh the weekly maintenance this week or if it's not going to come out until 1.4 i'm not even sure but they showed that there was a blind battle rifle where it has a talent on it that does 100 percent damage to uh enemies that are blinded so i think this would be a really cool combination um arc in my group has a uh toxic talent on his sniper rifle so he can blind people sometimes and if we have one person running the you know the the sticky flashbang um i think a hundred percent damage to targets that are are blind and deaf is going to be really good because not a lot of people build blind and deaf resistance like it's one of the worst you know resistances to build just because you know the only thing that it would help you with is just you know the sticky flashbang and you know flashbang grenades which people very rarely use flashbang grenades people usually go for the incendiaries or you know regular frag grenades for the crowd control um but the especially because like the the, the blind and deaf and the flashbangs doesn't really cc lock you like you know incendiaries and uh explosives or um frag grenades do how they kind of knock you back well the the, the flashbangs just blind you and that's it um so i think that this is actually really good because like i said a lot of people don't build blind and deaf resistance so a lot of the time you're going to be flashing them now how helpful is the four piece going to be in the dark zone i think it'll be really helpful um for clearing you know uh, landmarks and stuff like that like especially because of how strong the npcs are so i still think that this build will be super viable in the dark zone maybe not for pvp as much because you won't do as much damage but also you got to remember with the 20 percent pulse critical hit damage that you're going to have uh when you're pulsing your teammates are going to do a lot of damage so it's going to be really helpful if you have this uh, the correct team comp but the cool thing is that if you ever do get a kill 
um, and, and say you walk up and melee him, you're going to have a split second where you're going to be able to blind them in that AoE. So I think that'll be really helpful with the right build, especially when the battle rifle comes out. I can't wait to use that. Um, I think Skill Up and, and Eric said that it's very, very, very fun to use. So I can't wait to see uh, how it works out. So yeah i'm just super excited for that so this build is specifically just kind of waiting for that but in the meantime it's actually not a bad build because of the 268 pieces and like if you're doing underground you're gonna get blind stuff a lot and it's not gonna be super hard for you to put one of these builds together so i think it's a good um build to run until you get something else that you that you need or that you want like i've been running five centuries lately and because my my pieces are are like out of date like you know some of them are 240s that aren't great um they don't have mod slots because they're from 1.2 and it's just not a super great build I, I have a really low toughness with it i end up having like 200 and like 20k or 250k um so even though i use it for like the incursions and stuff this build is a lot lot stronger because you can take more uh, of a hit and you can also do a decent amount of damage as well and bring something to your team that's what that's one of the biggest things about how this game is forming pvp wise is it's not so much about who can do the most damage or who can tank the most you know the most damage it's more about with your team comp how much can you bring to your team and you bring a lot to your team with the blind with the extra 20 percent pulse critical hit damage and also the blind effect and knowing that you will never have to be kind of pushed out of a fight because you can't see i think you bring a lot to the team with this build and i think this build is pretty solid um i will make a video in the future uh probably in the next couple of days if you guys want to see like the specifics of my build i'm definitely down to show that to you guys um and go through it and, and show you guys what to look for and what to go for um i think most of my skill attributes are either pulse uh duration or um first aid self or ally heal which is really good my my heal heals for so much now it's insane like i can be one bar of health and just running through you know my heal one time will put me to full health because of the 20 you know 24 25 000 skill power whatever it is um and the extra crit chance really helps a lot with the um g36 my this g36 is like ridiculously strong i actually rolled uh one of the talents today to get brutal so now i have brutal deadly and uh focused on my g36 now a lot of people said that focus isn't a great talent i kind of think it's not that bad now um you may you know think well i'm never gonna have all of my skills off cooldown you'd be kind of surprised um you don't notice how much that you have skills off cooldown and you sometimes don't need to use them that extra 14 percent is not only if they're super close or if they're super far it's all of the time so i think that that is definitely pretty good and uh i think it's useful it, it's a lot more useful than people think right now i know focus is is currently broken if you guys don't know i think it does uh, it, it has the 14%. It's constant whether you have skills off cooldown or on cooldown, and then it's like goes to another 14%. So when that gets fixed, uh, the G36 is also losing a bit of base damage, which some people were upset with me about. I don't know why they're mad at me about it, about saying that they're going to nerf it because I'm just relaying information that the dev said. I, I do think that the base damage on the G36 is way too high. Um, unless they buff the rest of the assault rifles, I think that would be fine. Um, but I think that what they're going to do is they're going to nerf the damage a little bit on the G36 because in the next update, we're supposed to be getting armor penetration against players, which will be so good because that will kind of, you know, uh, put a dent in the tank meta because that way people can't just like stack armor and then you know just like not even have that much health and but just have like a million skill power um now they'll actually have to 
put some uh, effort into getting a lot of health because if your armor gets shredded and you have lowish health, you're just going to get sh absolutely destroyed. So that's going to be good. And I think that will make assault rifles viable. I think assault rifles are getting a little bit better, um, but I think the armor penetration to players is 100% needed. Um, I think even with this G36 and with how overpowered it is right now, it still isn't probably super strong in the dark zone. Um, I haven't tested it out too much. Some people have been upset with me that I haven't been doing dark zone as much. The reason I've been running underground so much is because if I'm enjoying PvE in a game, I want to just do PvE. And some people may be like, well, no, just go right into the dark zone. But the dark zone is like my fun for when I feel like there's nothing else to do. Because in the dark zone, you have like that feeling of of situations happening that aren't the same every single time so you may run into you know a full group that you know uh, just extracted and you, you you kill them and then they come back and and I, like there's so many cool things that happen in the dark zone uh, PvP wise that I can save that for when I get bored of underground like I just I'm really enjoying underground right now I'm leveling up and I don't want to um, you know stop doing pve if pve is so fun and i think that's what their main focus was on this this update was to make pve a lot fun again and uh it is a lot of fun and i enjoy it and, and i like playing it and i like leveling up and i like getting underground caches and the replayability is awesome because you're not constantly doing the same thing over and over although like the underground missions are like kind of variations of each other the fact that it gets shuffled up and that things get moved around just makes it feel different it's it's hard to explain unless you have underground yourself and you can probably back me up on this it's just the, the feeling of not doing the same exact thing, fighting the same exact enemies every single time, the randomly generated part of it makes it extremely addicting and extremely fun to keep doing. So, um, yeah, I just have been enjoying the PvE a lot. So, uh, l let's go over what I've stated about the blind set. So, I think it's super good for PvE. It brings a lot to your squad. Um, and I think that it could be viable in the future in PvP as soon as the blind rifle comes out. So here you guys go. Are you guys ready for me to open this underground cache? Now, a lot of people wanted to see how good the PP-19 or the Bison was in this game. And it was kind of hard to tell because I didn't know anyone who had a really good role on it. So I'm like, all right, let's open this underground cache. Most of these underground caches are, are almost all of them. You get new stuff. So as soon as I saw that Bison, it had 121,000 DPS. I was like like whoa and there it is guys so 45 percent crit hit damage deadly brutal and hurried now i don't think hurried is a very good you see me like kind of freaking out um i don't think hurried is a very good talent um especially because if you're using an extended mag on your um on your bison like i feel like you should be um, you're not going to be reloading too often. So the long reload time really doesn't matter. Um, so I, I what I'm going to do is I'm going to reroll hurried for fierce and that's going to be God roll on the new SMGs. You want to have fierce fierce is so important because you got to remember if you have brutal and you have, um, you know, you have the passive pulse critical hit damage. Fierce is going to be one of the strongest talents that you can get because you need that crit chance. Anyways, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to drop the video a like. Let me know what you guys think, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Take care, everybody.